This is Echo 3, and let's discuss jet-powered flying wings. In the 1940s, several companies were looking into crafts like this. Most notably, Horton, made by the Germans, was looking into a craft very similar to the one I'm flying right now. Northrup had several designs, and Armstrong Whitworth had a design that they were also working with. Because the craft has no tail section, yaw control becomes a little bit more difficult. That's what those odd control surfaces are on the tips of my wings. Let's go ahead and make our own. This craft is inspired by the Horton H9, which would then later receive its military designation of Horton HE229, which would then later receive the designation of Gotha GO229 when production switched companies. The Horton brothers were working with flying wings during the interwar period for their gliders. And the reason they were working with this is because it saved weight and materials. And the reason they were working with gliders is because during the interwar period, Germany was prevented from having their own air force, but they could have gliders. And so the Horton brothers were doing aircraft experiment with gliders. And they came upon this flying wing design that they thought showed a lot of promise. Then during World War II, they were able to get some contracts to work on a craft specifically that looked very similar to this. And with the invention of the jet engine, they were working on a jet powered flying wing. And so we're gonna make ours a jet powered as well. There were other propeller driven aircraft that were flying wings at this time, but I'm really just gonna focus on the jet powered ones. Yaw control will be achieved by using these air brakes on the tips of the wings. Because our craft doesn't have any rudder, we need some way to control the craft in the yaw direction. Well, the game will allow us to assign yaw control to these air brakes. Normally, what I'd like to be able to do is have elevons that are able to flare one up and one down, but I cannot get the game to assign yaw control that way, but this will work for us, so I'll assign yaw control to the air brakes, and then with SAS on, we can then have the craft remain mostly stable as it will correct itself by applying the brakes on the side that's slipping forward. Northrop did some experiments with having small vertical stabilizers on their craft that would have helped with the natural instabilities of craft like this. I did find that by canting the wings, giving a little bit of dihedral angle, changing the angle of attack of the wings, and with that back section that flares out into a, a triangle, messing with the exact angle there, I was able to get some more stable craft depending on how much I really worked with angling the wings just right. This time, I'm not spending as much time on that and will achieve all my yaw stability using the SAS. So I do spend quite a bit of time just getting everything angled just right on the wings. I'm using the absolute move tool on these air brakes. What that's gonna do is I'm gonna get them lined up perfectly in line with the airflow. So I'm using the absolute move tool to get them perfectly spaced with each other. Then I'm gonna use the absolute rotate tool because I angled the wing and the air brakes got angled a little bit. So I'm gonna angle them back to perfectly in line with the cockpit. It's a nice thing to do with the absolute move tool is you can get things set exactly how you need them. Depending on exactly how much time I would spend working with the angles of all the wings, some of the crafts I designed were able to fly naturally stable so I could fly them without the SAS in the game. However, this craft will not be that way and I'll need to use the SAS just to be able to make this thing flyable, which is what really in real life, what most of these companies found out is that these crafts just have an inherent instability with them. And it wouldn't be until the fly-by-wire systems were invented that flying wings really became an option just because they are very difficult to control. Northrop found that out with their YB-49. The craft just was very difficult for pilots to handle. Now let's work on the engine section. Originally, the Horton HE229 was going to use the BMW 003 turbojet engine, but due to availability issues, they were not going to have access to it. So they used the Junkers Yumo 004B jet engine. I believe 
The jet engine in the game, called the Juno, was inspired by the Junkers Yumo. I also think it may have been inspired by the American J-30. This engine in the game is the J-20. So I believe that it was inspired by some of the very first turbojet engines developed by both Germany and the United States. We're going to go ahead and go with a tricycle arrangement on our craft, similar to how the Horton brothers were designing their craft. So about these early jet engines. So the Juno in the game actually has about twice the thrust that the Yumo and the American J-30 were able to offer. So we're going to have a lot more thrust available to us than what some of the early jet engines had at the time. Although the BMW 003 would have been a lot closer to the thrust we actually see with the engines in the game. So maybe this craft is going to be a little closer to what the Horton brothers actually had in mind. The Junkers Yumo engine actually had a lot of reliability issues and that really affected the development of this particular craft. At one point there was an engine failure and I believe the test pilot died because he was overcome by the fumes of the malfunctioning engine. So a lot of this craft may have gone better with better engines. Now to be fair on Junkers and their engine, they were really being hampered by Allied bombing and just couldn't produce the quality engines that they needed to. So probably for the best, only one Horton HE 229 exists today and it has quite an interesting story. So the Americans initiated an operation called Operation Paperclip where they were trying to get some of Germany's experimental craft and technologies before the Soviets could get a hold on them. Well, they were able to get a hold of one of these crafts and send it back initially to the United Kingdom where they were hoping to test with some jet engines, but Britain's jet engines at the time didn't fit in this particular craft, so they ended up sending it back to the United States where it is now in the possession of the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. The Smithsonian has recently finished their restoration work and has put the craft on display. In order to not risk clipping the air brakes on the runway when I apply the brakes, I am unbinding them from the brake action group, so that should help the craft be a little bit safer on the runway. Now I'm going to try flying this craft without SAS. So that's just me applying the yaw controls, and you can see this craft is very difficult to keep stable. And if I let it get just a little bit too far off of my prograde, it becomes completely uncontrollable. So this time I'm going to use the SAS, which would be kind of like our fly-by-wire systems today. So the computer will then help me keep the craft stable. We're going to go ahead and take off. And you can see it's, it's doing a lot of work with the yaw controls to help keep the craft going straight. And it, it really is tricky to fly these and the more time I would spend on a particular design I could get them better but for the sake of demonstration I was trying to throw together one quickly that you could watch. Often I would go to test flight and then I'd go back to the hangar make a small correction and then I'd test flight and go back make another small correction and I didn't want to put you guys through all of that. Right now my SAS is doing a really good job of keeping the craft stable. You can see it making small tweaks to the yaw as it tries to keep the craft from slipping left and right. The original craft had a top speed of 300 meters per second and I'm going to try and reach that with this test flight and I actually do. That seems to be about the same top end. So my craft seemed to be pretty comparable to what the Horton HE229 was. I hope you enjoyed learning about this craft. If you'd like to learn about other designs throughout history, please leave a comment and let me know what you're thinking. I have enjoyed learning about flying wings and would love to do more research on other aircraft as well. I find just this stuff is fascinating to me and how it led into the iconic B-2 spirit that we have today. I am Echo 3. Thanks for joining me on the discussion about jet-powered flying wings. I will see you next time.